we would like to welcome our next conversation, Power Pairing, How to Translate Purpose into Action. Please welcome panelists Tori Birch, Executive Chairman and Chief Creative Officer, Tori Birch, LLC, number 88 on this year's Forbes Power Women's List, Mina Harris, Founder and CEO, Phenomenal, and moderator, Manit Ahuja, Senior Editor, Forbes. Well, it is my great pleasure to welcome you both here today. Thank you for joining us for such an important discussion on how to translate purpose into action. Let's dive right in. The events of the past year have set the stage for important conversations around longstanding systemic inequities across industries. Tori, you've done a significant amount of work on this front with your foundation, which has provided a million dollars in grants and over $57 million in loans. In your view, what are the most powerful avenues to help support women and underrepresented founders weather the current crisis? Yeah, I mean, well, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. But uh, listen, women have been hit so hard during this pandemic and, and certainly women of color. And it is so clear they need so many things. So it was hard to even think about how do you narrow it down. But two things that our foundation work has, has really been focusing on is obviously access to capital is, is mm -hmm. one of the biggest and then access to safe childcare and, um, and affordable. Um, because that is the question of how do you balance anything in life, but being a mom, having a career. So the access to capital, when you think about the PPP loans, 60% mm -hmm. of women got them, 40% of women own businesses. So mm -hmm. there's a bit of a discrepancy there. There's a lot that we need to do um, to help women along this journey. And I think the stimulus bill needs to, the next one, support small and medium businesses. But we also need to re-engage local CDFIs, the local lenders, because they've been hit hard as well. So we, we need to really support them. We've made some progress with women, and now I fear that progress is, is being erased, and we have a lot to do. Mm -hmm. Mina, I'd love your thoughts on this as well, if you had anything you wanted to add. Yeah, well, I mean, I think um, Tori covered, I think, a lot of the important sort of policies and practices that we need to think about in terms of how we're supporting working women, um, women entrepreneurs, right, um, in our country. And this pandemic especially has, has laid bare that um, for all of us, um, we need a safety net. We need um, access to capital, right, to thrive. And so I think those are really, really important points. Child care, as Tori said. I'll come at it from, um, so that being said, that is super important. Also for me, it's really community, right? And access to information and access to advice. And I think once again, with this pandemic, um, we really kind of brought back that humanity and or at least um, have come to, I think, appreciate more that humanity and connection and understanding the power that each of us has to help one another. Um, I, as an entrepreneur and as a founder, have found some of the best uh, advice and support from my peers and from other um, female founders, from women like Tori, who I can look to, right, and, and think about what she's done um, in her incredible career. So um, I think we shouldn't lose sight of, of the, the power of that as well. And I think that this pandemic, the silver lining of it is that we are sort of getting back to some of those basics, right? Same thing with childcare, recognizing that um, women uh, all along and parents all along have been juggling, you know, work with home and everything has been, you know, sort of um, uh, uh, blown up all at once, all at the same time, right? And we're really seeing the impact of that, but it's it's been the reality for all of us every single day. Mm -hmm. And continuing on that point, Tori, in addition to helping fund these businesses, the pandemic has greatly accelerated the shift of business operations and e-commerce online, up nearly 50%, according to the Commerce Department for the second quarter. And so at the onset of the pandemic, your foundation really leaned, leaned into offering digital tools and weekly webinars with thousands of small business owners. I think over 300,000 small businesses have utilized those services. Can you tell us a little bit about why that was so important to you? Well, I think it was actually, what was just talked about a bit because they do need community. They need access to information and they also need advice. Like I think it was such a Herculean effort to think about, okay, all of a sudden you have no business. How do we take it from here? How do we pivot potentially 
can actually do something different with our business. So we are, we're a constant source um, of information for them. And I think that we ourselves, the foundation pivoted quickly because we realized that people needed help to figure out how to access the PPP loans. They needed community um, to talk about who, regardless of the business, they were experiencing so many of the same challenges. So it, um, the, the webinars were a big part of that. And I'm super happy that people tuned in because that wasn't a given. And I think that was really helpful information for them. Yeah, we've seen a lot of corporations lean into that effort as well because the re-digitalization uh, and reskilling of America is equally as important, especially during this time. So as I'm sure we can all agree, 2020 has been unprecedented on so many levels, but change and progress can arise out of challenge and hardship. Mina, on Monday, you wrote an op-ed calling this year, quote, tumultuous, trying, and frankly, terrible. Yet, you also spoke to the power of resiliency that is inherent in all of us. What makes you hopeful that this pivotal moment has the potential to translate to meaningful change? Well, I think that we, as um, you know, part of this moment are finally having, you know, tough conversations or what may be tough for certain people um, that frankly we should have been having a long time ago and I hope that we can continue to have those conversations. I have been saying you know constantly through the, from the beginning of the pandemic through the election that this idea of returning back to normal is something that I reject because normal was not working for so many people right we cannot go back to that and so using this you know moment of crisis to understand that it is an opportunity for change um, to build on you know what we just spoke about um, how we support working mothers, how we support caretakers, how we allow them to succeed in the workplace and to be ambitious and to achieve and excel while raising a family or taking care of their other personal family responsibilities, right? And the fact mm -hmm. is, um, again, when we talk about, you know, workplace policies and practices, um, what is available to working women just in terms of general support, um, it was not there before um, and certainly not in the way that it should have been. And so uh, the fact that, you know, coming out of the pandemic, coming out of the BLM protests from this summer and, and continuing to have these conversations, um, I'm hopeful. I think um, I'm cautiously hopeful and optimistic. Um, and, and, and what I mean by that is that we have to um, stick with it and we have to keep having right. these conversations. We have to keep um, frankly, holding people accountable and our leaders accountable, right, to, uh, mm -hmm. to keep this going. And I think uh, that is the work not only of our leaders, right, our elected leaders, our, our corporate leaders, um, but it is up to us, right, it is up to people right. to make sure that we are staying in, in the fight and uh, keeping our eye on the ball and understanding that this is a, an opportunity to keep this going in a way that is so urgent and has been so needed for such a long time. That's so true. So both of you have bridged critical divides and empowered opportunities for others by using your voices platforms, and brands to drive change forward. Tori, what responsibility should businesses and brands carry as vehicles for change, particularly when they're facing their own challenges as no business has been immune to the impact of the pandemic? Well, I mean, I, I've always been interested in this idea of brand activism and social entrepreneurship. So I think it's it's key for businesses to take a significant role. I think um, they have to, and it's particularly if they can. If, if we can all band together and know that we want to do better and, and similar to what Mina say, not look back, but look forward and mm -hmm. create the meaningful change that we all so desperately want. I really believe that. I think um, our, our brand and our foundation has been a vehicle for change. And I think we could be doing even more of that. When, mm -hmm. when masks needed to be made, we took fabric that we weren't using made masks, but what then we started producing masks and 100% of those net proceeds, we've raised over $2 million in just since COVID started where we've given um, 1 million to the International Medical Corps to fight COVID. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's ways of really creating meaningful change with your with your business and and we want to keep that momentum going and i love that businesses like mina and all these businesses think that this is the future and that to me is right. innovative also and on that point you also lobbied personally in washington for provisions on the cares act that made a huge difference to small okay. business owners yes for my first time <laughs> How what, how was that experience? You know, I, uh, Mina has a little more experience in politics. I've gotten obsessed with politics in the last few years. 
but it was, it's hard. But I think that the thing that I really think a lot about is how do we just bring people together? What is the common thing that people need and not be divisive? That's, that's the key, I think. It was interesting. It was, it was, you know, in a very bipartisan way, how do we get together for an industry that was underrepresented? We were not being represented and we're millions and millions of jobs. Right. I think over 4 million, right? In the retail well, sector alone. It doesn't include retail. So fashion is not a light industry. It's not frivolous. If you think right. about it, it's, it changes the way you feel. It, it gives people confidence. It's, rep, it's, it's um, talking about what's happening in the macro environment. It's, it, right. there's, and it's a business. It's one of the biggest business drivers after finance in New York city. It's number two. So right. It's not a light industry. Definitely not. And on that point, Mina, you launched Phenomenal in 2017 as a campaign to support women's organizations. And even though I read you didn't intend to start a quote movement, you ended up tapping into something very significant. Since then, how have you galvanized momentum around the causes you champion? Mm -hmm. I just, sorry, I want to go back to something that Tori said, because it is so mm -hmm. wonderful. And I think it's just such a great example for all of us, which is that she said, you know, we did something, it was great, but we can do more, we can be even better. And I think that is what all of us can ask ourselves, what more can we be doing? How much, you know, can we be better, right? And continue to challenge ourselves and to um, reach higher. And so I appreciate that, Tori. And um, I said this at the uh, when we were backstage, but you are such an inspiration to so many. So thank you for modeling that. Um, for Phenomenal, uh, you know, I, I would go back first to the power of community. Uh, that is really um, the perspective that I personally, I would say in the early days of it, really brought to the the um, the campaign, which was as a community organizer, somebody who had a background in politics and understanding um, the power of connection, the power um, in numbers and the strength in numbers. So that is a huge component of what we do. I think the other is um, when you talk about sort of, you know, successfully, I'm being interrupted by a child. Um, <laughs> uh, successfully mobilizing, right, um, groups of people. I think it's also about meeting people where they are. Oftentimes, I think it's about making information and the ability to engage and participate accessible. And so that's something that we um, really pride ourselves in is is being able to take what can be, you know, complex, hard to understand, um, perhaps even sort of insidery, you know, issues that historically have been, um, you know, worked on by activists and and folks who are doing the work behind the scenes on the ground, but thinking about how do we elevate and amplify that work so that we can engage mass audiences in these issues and in the activism mm -hmm. and social justice advocacy that we know will be helpful to, you know, push those policy and, and issue agendas forward. Um, and for us, you know, uh, as you said at the beginning, I mean, I, I didn't know what it would become, but I did see on day one, the power of, you know, putting a simple message on a t-shirt that was clearly speaking to people and is sort of, frankly, insignificant and, uh, you know, small as that may seem, right? One little t-shirt. It was so apparent, again, on day one, that it was resonating with people, that it, it was still something concrete, right? That they could identify with as a part of a community that made them feel, as Tori just said, confident, right? And, and right. Um, inspired to keep speaking out and to be a part of a community of, you know, empowered women who are using their voices. So uh, I think for me and coming from a background of politics where, you know, I think I, I sort of had a purist view, if I'm being honest, um, before all of this, where I thought, you know, there's a saying in the, the political world, which is, you know, lawn signs don't vote, like that's not enough, right? That what is that actually doing? And I had the view um, early on that like, what does a t-shirt do, right? Is that um, do more, right? And I think we can challenge ourselves to do more, but let's not underestimate the power of that, right? And understand that for what we were seeing was for many people, it was the first time that they were engaging in that way. And let's encourage that right and provide opportunities for people to engage at different levels that that work for them and bring their unique talents and contributions to the table right and to Tori's point it was so incredible to see how uh, something as simple as a t-shirt could embolden embolden and bring a community together I think I had read that you sold over 10,000 t-shirts in, in the first day, or I might be mixing up my numbers there, but- A little bit. I mean, thank you. Uh, it was 2,500 on the first day. I will never forget that number. Um, but yeah, since then, you know, it's grown into so much more than just that one little t-shirt. And it just shows the power of that seed, right? And I think of it in many ways as sort of an engagement ladder, right? Maybe you're coming through the door because you saw, you know, Tori Birch wearing a cool t-shirt, right? But once you're there, that's when you are part of a community that you are learning with, that you are engaging with, 
with, right? And that is the power, um, again, of, of community that I go back to time and time again, which is at the end of the day, that's really all we have. And um, there's so much power in that um, mm -hmm. in so many different ways that we, we, we've discussed, um, you know, throughout this conversation. So I know we only have a couple minutes left, so I want to switch over to a really important topic of ambition. I mean, both you and Tori have dedicated your voices and work to reframing the term ambition and combating the stereotypes that have often held women back. You recently said, when we encourage ambitious girls, they become ambitious women, and ambitious women break barriers, shatter ceilings, and win. I imagine this was part of your inspiration for writing two children's books this year, your next ambitious girl out January 19th, I think. Can you share a little bit more about that? Yes, uh, and I love talking to Tori about this in our sort of individual journeys. And I think ambition means different things to different people at di in different moments. But um, what I uh, was learning as I became a parent and becoming, you know, a, a woman in the world um, was that the way I was taught to view female ambition was sort of different than what society was telling me. Um, I grew up in a, what I now realize as a parent myself was a very unique family of um, strong women. It was just sort of a, a really tiny family unit of all women and, and female ambition was really sort of my worldview. And it wasn't um, taught to me in a sense of, you know, this is a word and this is what it means and you should do this. But instead I was, I learned it by example, right? I saw women, these women in my family doing incredible things in the world every day. And um, I I was told you can do anything, you can be anything, you, you know, find your purpose, find your passions and go after them, right? Um, you will encounter challenges, but stick with it. And, and that is ambition, it is purpose, it is self-determination. Um, and I think reflecting back on that, not only, you know, as, as my experience as a woman of color, but also as a parent is that, mm -hmm. um, we sort of have no choice but to be ambitious, right? It is uh, by definition being a woman uh, in the world daring to be successful in a male dominated world, that is ambitious. And that is something that all of us should have access to. And, um, you know, realizing that, you know, society tells us something different, right? There's a double standard. Um, we don't talk about uh, ambition as a critique of, of men, right? It's not something that, uh, you know, women are told to hide or, or to diminish. And um, I wanted to make sure that I, as a parent, was, you know, taking the opportunity to start early with my girls to, you know, reclaim those words that are used right. to tear women down, right? To redefine them, to reframe, reframe them. And frankly, for adult women, right? Um, we also have to do that unlearning and relearning and, and reject those double standards that um, a patriarchal, you know, society um, applies to us. So that's mm -hmm. um, an important passion of mine. And um, it's really, a, you know, pick any word, right? That's right used against women. Um, and so maybe I'll do like a ABCD, you know, alphabet book on all of them for my next one. <laughs> well, that's a good idea. So, but Tori, your personal journey with ambition took a little bit longer. Can you talk to us a little bit about what motivated your Embrace Ambition initiative? I, I love Mina's um, take on it, but I have to say our, it started 15 years ago with me. And, and similarly, I didn't realize that ambition would be a negative until a journalist asked me in a pretty derogatory way, are you ambitious? And I was called out by a friend after the interview and she's like, never, ever shy away from that word again. And it, for the next 15, 10 years, um, it's, it's, it's st stuck with me. And so four years ago, we did a public service announcement on embracing ambition. And it reached every single country with the exception of maybe two in the world. It really struck a chord. The mm -hmm. one thing I will say, we need to just get it to the root of why it's not, why women don't feel comfortable being ambitious. I think it's changing. I see younger women feeling more comfortable, but I think we need to get men to be part of the conversation. And, and that's a big part of what I think about with women's issues. We all agree. We know we have a long way to go. We need to get men table to be advocates, to support us and to really be part of that. And, and when you talk to fathers about their daughters, they're very excited to do that. Right. Well, on that note, we're out of time. So I want to thank you both so much for an incredibly empowering discussion. I feel beyond inspired and I know our audience must too. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much. You so much. Thank you.